Okay, dear students, welcome to the class. So today let's let's discuss about the isomerism and the different parts of isomerism. So as you are all aware of the basic concepts of isomerism, and you learned something about the isomerism in your previous classes. So compounds with same molecular formula and same chemical composition, but differ in the physical and chemical properties are called isomers, and the phenomenon is called isomerism. That isomerism is broadly classified into two types: structural isomerism and stereo isomerism. Compounds with same molecular formula but differ in the structure are called structural isomers, and the phenomenon is called structural isomerism. And we learnt in detail about the structural isomerism in our previous classes, so that today's our discussion is purely confined to stereo isomerism. So. the simple definition of stereo isomers and the stereo isomerism is as follows compounds with same molecular formula same chemical composition same structural formula but differ in the spatial arrangement of atoms or groups in three dimensional space are called stereo isomers and the phenomenon is called stereo isomerism such stereo isomers are again classified into two types geometrical isomers and optical isomers let us discuss both of these two one by one in detail and first let me select the optical isomerism optical isomerism and optical isomers are the compounds with same molecular formula same chemical composition same structural formula and almost same physical and chemical properties but they differ in the direction of rotating the plane polarized net with all identical properties including both physical and chemical remember if any two compounds differ in the direction of rotating the plane polarized light such compounds are called optical isomers and the phenomenon is called optical isomerism so before going in detail about your optical isomers and optical isomerism let us learn about what is plane polarized light remember any light which is coming from a source is an ordinary light which is having vibrations in all the 360 degree when such ordinary light is passed through nikol prism so whatever the light which is coming out from the nikol prism will have the vibration in one, only one plane any light which is having vibrations in only one plane is called plane polarized light and any compound which is capable of rotating such plane polarized light is said to be optically active or to call a compound as an optically active compound it should rotate the plane polarized light either in the clockwise or in the anti clockwise direction compounds which rotates the plane polarized light in the opposite direction with all identical physical and chemical properties are called optical isomers and the phenomenon is called optical isomerism now you know about the plane polarized light the light which is having only vibration in only one plane any optical isomer which rotates the plane polarized light in clockwise direction i mean to say right towards right is called dextro rotatory and it is denoted by a letter small d and more commonly it is indicated by a sign plus and in another optical isomer which rotates the plane polarized light in the anti clockwise direction i mean to say towards the left is called levo rotatory and it is denoted by a letter small l and it is indicated by a sign minus so dextro and levo both of these two are the optical isomers but they rotate the plane polarized light in the opposite direction with all other identical properties then when any optically active compound rotates the plane polarized light what what is the direction of rotation and what is the angle of rotation these two factors are to be determined experimentally by using an instrument called polarimeter at the time of determining the direction of rotation and the angle of rotation by using a polarimeter we need to follow a set of conditions to determine these two so that the a particular angle rotated by an optically active compound is commonly referred as specific rotation specific rotation is denoted by a symbol alpha and it is defined in a very simple manner as follows 
specific rotation is the angle of rotation caused by an optically active compound with the solution concentration of 1 gram per cm cube with the solution length of 1 decimeter for a given wavelength lambda at constant temperature. So, uh, while determining the specific rotation of any optically active compound, we need to follow the following four important conditions. The solution should have a specific concentration of 1 gram per cm cube and the length of the solution which should be filled in the polarimeter should be 1 decimeter and there must be a fixed wavelength for the plane polarized light which we are going to use and till the completion of the experiment the temperature should be constant. Therefore, by taking these four important factors we are going to define the specific rotation as the angle of rotation caused by an optically active compound with a solution concentration of 1 gram per cm cube with a solution length of 1 decimeter for a given wavelength at constant temperature and it is denoted by a simple mathematical, mathematical equation alpha lambda t where alpha is the specific rotation L is the as I remember alpha, the lambda is the wavelength t is the temperature so that alpha is the angle rotated by the optically active compound L is the L is the length of the solution, C is the concentration of the solution. Then, the specific rotation of an optically active compound depends on different factors. There are six different factors which decides the angle of rotation, the specific rotation of an optically active compound. The first one is nature of the compound. When you change the compound, there will be a change in specific rotation. The second one is nature of the solvent. When you change the solvent at the time of determining the solution, then there will be a change in the specific rotation. The third one is so the wavelength of the plane polarized light. The fourth one is the temperature at which the specific rotation is going to be determined. And the next uh, factor is the concentration of the solution. And the last one is length of the solution. These are the six different factors upon which the specific rotation of an optically active compound depends. Let me repeat the different factors which are going to affect the specific rotation of an optically active compound. Nature of the compound, nature of the solvent, wavelength of the plane polarized light, temperature, concentration of the solution and length of the solution. I hope this much is very clear. Thank you.